I'm convinced that uh, the European Union, and especially this European Parliament, must keep pushing the Russian authorities for political and democratic reforms. And more precisely, uh, the registration of the democratic opposition parties, what is not the case today. The return to the direct election of the governors and other provisions that are foreseen in the political reform package as developed by the Medvedev Working Group. And that could finally, that could end with new state Duma elections later this year of in the beginning of next year. The processes uh, which have been underway uh, for a period of time, for virtually 20 years, but which do, are not yielding the kind of results uh, which uh, a part of Russian society would like to see, the part uh, which tends to be committed to European and democratic norms. Uh, the general conclusion made by the Golis uh, Monitoring Association, the largest uh, uh, such association in Russia uh, in, uh, involved uh, in the monitoring of elections. Now, that conclusion is identical with the conclusion made by OSCE uh, delegation and uh, by the uh, uh, Council of Euro Europe Parliamentary Assembly's delegation. In the same way as the 2011 elections, 2008 and 2007 elections uh, were not free or fair the kind of response that the Putin's ascent to uh, presidency, or shall I say, return uh, uh, to presidency, uh, will receive here in the EU. Uh, I believe that the response should be that of a, a mild disappointment rather than a warm embrace, because that will send a very powerful message to the Russian opposition that the European Union and its member countries are on the correct side of history and they are acknowledging that Russian citizens need change and request very concrete reforms from its government. The main message of the last few days and weeks and the last two months is that the Putin era, as we came to know it in the last 12 years, is effectively over. It was over in December when in the freezing cold over 100,000 people came to the center of Moscow to protest against the rigged parliamentary elections and to demand a free and fair vote and to protest against the Putin regime. Uh, and there was a time in the early and mid-2000s when uh, Mr. Putin could do absolutely anything he pleased. Uh, he could ride roughshod over society, over the country, uh, and do so with complete immunity. He could shut down independent television, he could jail his opponents, he could rig elections and ban opposition parties, and expect nothing but silence and apathy in return. Well, that time is over and that time is not coming back. Just to say that there were shortcomings and irregularities, and I would structure them in two different directions. One are on the question of equal chances for candidates, for parties at the elections, Duma elections, and for candidates now. And the second package is uh, actual election fraud and, and certain um, uh, fraudulent measures taken uh, during the elections. All of that comes against the backdrop of a political awakening that few of us would have expected only a few months ago. This is a new development in Russia and a very welcome development for all of us. We have been already doing as a European Parliament over two years, a lot of hearings, a lot of uh, resolutions. And uh, I think that our support in this respect uh, to Russian people have been also very, very important because they need also the international uh, support towards their uh, with their efforts. But uh, most and, and, uh, and uh, first important is that now the future of Russia is in the hands of Russian people. We can only support you from outside, but all what's going to happen in, in this big country is, is very much in the, in the hands of, of your citizens.